Training employees in personal hygiene, safe food preparation, proper cleaning and sanitizing, safe chemical handling, and pest identification and prevention is the responsibility of the food manager. With all the other responsibilities that the manager has, training is often the last thing that gets done. However, it should be the first thing you do. When you spend time training new employees right away as they start working in your kitchen, it saves time correcting problems later and ensures that food is handled safely and to standards. Sometimes, there's a training gap with an employee. A training gap is the difference between what an employee is required to know to perform a job and what that employee actually knows. There are several ways to determine if there is a training gap. One way is to observe employees' performances as they work. For example, you can check if they wash their hands before starting work and at appropriate times during their shift. Another way is to test employee food safety knowledge by asking questions, such as, how often should you wash your hands? A third way to determine a training gap is to survey employees to identify areas of weakness. This could be done using a short written or oral questionnaire before or after an employee is hired. Once you've determined a training gap exists, it's time to decide what type of training to use, how to implement the training, and where to find the training resources. You may choose to implement your own training or use external trainers and materials. There are several ways to implement your own training, including one-on-one -on -one training and group training. Let's look at some examples you can follow. With one-on-one -on -one training, you must demonstrate how to do a task correctly in front of an employee and then have that employee show you the same task. This method allows for timely feedback. If an employee does not perform the task correctly, you can demonstrate it again and have him or her repeat it until it's done correctly. The advantage of group training is that it is often a more uniform and cost-effective approach than one-on-one -on -one training. All employees in the group get the same information at the same time. You can lead the training yourself or ask your health inspector or another expert to do the training. Either way, you must ensure that every employee knows they are expected to attend the training. The effectiveness of group training depends on the trainer's ability to lead and transmit knowledge, so be sure to inspect a trainer's effectiveness ahead of time. There are many resources and aids available to help you train. For example, there are online training videos available from your health inspector as well as external instructors. Posters are also available from different sources that demonstrate such tasks as the correct way to wash hands, how to store food in the correct order inside a walk-in cooler, how to cool food, and the correct final cook temperatures. You can ask your health inspector or search for such posters on the internet. Many operators use a simple daily checklist to verify that their business is operating correctly and safely. A checklist should include items like having a supply of soap and towels at all hand washing sinks, proper storage order for the refrigerator, proper temperatures for refrigerated items, correct amounts of chemical sanitizers for sinks and spray bottles, and labels for all spray bottles. You can ask key employees to monitor the checklist. This will train them to be on the lookout for problem areas and allow for self-correction. Be sure to keep training records for all your training sessions, including one-on-one -on -one trainings. Records help verify your efforts to educate employees to maintain high standards for safety. You may want to share these training records with your health inspector to demonstrate your commitment to food safety. The final step of training is to evaluate it and answer such questions as, is your training strategy effective? Have employee practices improved? Or is more or different training needed? Successful training and evaluation programs use active managerial control. Active managerial control is a comprehensive food safety system. It includes operators and staff who are knowledgeable about food safety issues and responsible for controlling the practices and procedures that contribute to foodborne illness. An effective food safety system includes a Minnesota certified food manager who has passed an approved exam to become certified and has applied to the Minnesota Department of Health for certification as a food manager. Food workers who are knowledgeable in food safety. The Minnesota Food Code requires that there is always a person designated as being in charge at your establishment who is trained in food safety and has the authority to ensure that all of the employees are handling food safely. 
and Written Standard Operating Procedures, or SOPs, aimed at preventing foodborne illness. These include SOPs for employee health, employee training, hand washing, food sources, receiving and storage, cold holding, cooking, cooling, reheating, hot holding, date marking, and cleaning and sanitizing. Having written procedures for critical tasks can also make it easier to train employees effectively. Ongoing monitoring, correction, and verification is a critical part of your business. Don't wait until your food has made customers ill before starting your training. Don't wait until your health inspector gives you a bad report or your customers complain about employees or your food. Training must be an ongoing management activity. You must observe, correct, remind, and reinforce safe food handling every single day. Please show the food safety inspection video linked in the resources section of this module to help teach employees how to self-inspect.